My name is Rachel Poole Philhauer, and I am a master's candidate in the History of Design and Curatorial Studies program offered jointly by the Parsons School of Design and the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum. My talk, The Eameses and the Case Study House Program, Introducing Scandinavian Design to Mid-Century America, was presented at the Decorative Arts Trust's January 2020 Emerging Scholars Colloquium in New York. My research interest stemmed from two courses I took at Parsons, one focused on Charles and Ray Eames and another about Scandinavian design abroad in Denmark and Sweden. When many people hear the names Charles and Ray Eames, they maybe think of their well-known furniture or even think that they are brothers or cousins, but Charles and Ray were a collaborative couple, husband and wife. Charles and Ray Eames are one of the most well-known collaborative couples in design from the 20th century, with Ray only recently gaining the recognition that she deserves for her outstanding contributions to the couple's furniture, exhibitions, toys, and films. Charles and Ray's 36-year partnership exemplified their commitment to producing good design and creations. In addition to excelling in architecture and design, Charles and Ray distinguished themselves in the successful design and production of museum exhibitions, children's toys, and over 100 films, bringing their innovative minds to the forefront of mid-century America. Ray Kaiser was born on December 15, 1912 in Sacramento, California. Ray attended high school and junior college in Sacramento before she arrived at the May Friend Bennett School in Millbrook, New York. Once in New York, Ray studied under renowned German artist Hans Hoffmann. Ray enrolled at the Cranbrook Academy in September of 1940. Charles Eames was born on June 17, 1907 in St. Louis, Missouri. After Charles left his architectural studies at the end of his second year at Washington University, he ran an architectural office for four years. Charles's career took a turning point after the commission he completed for the St. Mary's Catholic Church in Helena, Arkansas, finished in 1936. St. Mary's Catholic Church was published in Architectural Forum, which caught the eye of well-known Finnish architect and president of the Cranbrook Academy of Art, Eliel Saarinen. Saarinen was very impressed with Charles's work and offered him an architectural fellowship at the Academy. Charles arrived at Cranbrook in 1938 and became the head of the Industrial Design Department. Charles and Ray met at Cranbrook in 1940 when Ray began her studies there and were soon after married on June 20th, 1941, forming a romantic and creative relationship. At Cranbrook, Charles met Eliel's son, Aero Saarinen, and a close friendship and collaborative creative partnership began. With Aero, Charles was influenced by Finnish design principles. Together, Charles and Aero won the 1940 Organic Design in Home Furnishings competition, sponsored by MoMA. Charles and Arrow won first place in seating with their organic chair, pictured on the screen. Charles was working with a Scandinavian designer, utilizing cornerstones of Scandinavian furniture design, such as ergonomics, simplicity in form and material, creating an elegance in design using a bent plywood shell. The chair was affordable, intended to be mass-produced, and comfortable. Soon after they got married, Charles and Ray moved west to Ray's native California, where the newly married couple would stay until their deaths. Charles died on August 21, 1978, and Ray died exactly 10 years later, on August 21, 1988. Once they were settled in Southern California, Charles and Ray continued to design furniture together and experimented with molding plywood. In the 1940s, Charles and Ray became good friends with John Intenza, 
pictured on the screen, editor of Arts and Architecture magazine. Arts and Architecture sponsored the Case Study House program. In this monumental architecture and design initiative, the magazine commissioned well-known architects to design homes that represented a new prototype for post-World War II domestic living, using new materials and fresh takes on modern architecture. Charles and Ray designed and built Case Study House No. 8 for themselves in the picturesque and tranquil Pacific Palisades, an area situated between the Santa Monica Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. With large eucalyptus trees providing shade and unobstructed views of the ocean, Charles and Ray moved into their new home on December 24, 1949. Through the summer research grant provided by the Decorative Arts Trust, I was able to travel to Southern California and tour the exterior and the interior of Case Study House No. 8, the home that Charles and Ray Eames lived in until their respected deaths. Charles and Ray lived in Case Study House No. 8, and it is perfectly preserved today by the Eames Foundation. In July of 2019, I had the pleasure of visiting the Eames home through my summer research grant. I was toured inside the home by Charles's granddaughter, where she showed me cornerstones of Charles and Ray's living in the home during their lives, how they cultivated the area around the home, as well as an interior tour. The home is situated in a eucalyptus tree grove, which now overlooks the Santa Monica Pier. The home's original design and construction is meticulously preserved by the foundation, honoring Charles and Ray's design. Photos are not allowed inside the home, but my tour included time in the living spaces, infamously filled with Charles and Ray's furniture, Hans Hoffman art, and precious collection of books from their worldly travels and close circle of friends, artists, and designers. To return to my research interest, a few things caught my eye during the tour. Looking into the Scandinavian influences seen in Charles and Ray's life and in Case Study House No. 8, I learned on the tour that Scandinavia had an everyday presence in the cozy and eclectic living room, more specifically over the friendly and warm reading nook. Charles hung up twinkly lights above this space and referred to them as his Tivoli lights. Tivoli Gardens is a theme park in Copenhagen that inspired Walt Disney's Disneyland. Moving into the kitchen, another subtle nod to their travels was noticed. A sugar pot on the stove made me immediately recall my trip weeks prior to Sweden. This sugar jar, shown on the screen, was designed by Marianne Westman for the Swedish porcelain manufacturing company Rorstrand in 1952. The design is called the Mon Ami. The jar, designed in the famous Mon Ami pattern for the Swedish porcelain manufacturers, was designed by Swedish designer Westman. The nationalistic romantic design that is synonymous of mid-century Swedish ceramics is still just as popular today, stated by their website, and seen throughout my travels in Stockholm. Pictured on the screen are images from Stockholm, Sweden. On the left, you can see the Mon Ami pattern gracing the cover of a summer 2019 Rorstrand catalog. In the center, you can see the pattern on display in the Design Depot at the National Museum of Sweden, and on the right in the Rorstrand flagship store in Stockholm, Sweden, you see the pattern for sale still today. The presence of the Rorstrand sugar jar of the newly introduced Monami pattern speaks to not only Charles and Ray's travels in the region, but their keen eye of recognizing good and timeless design. Combining my wonderful tour of the Eames house and my recent coursework abroad, 
My current research is looking at possible connections between two common motifs of Scandinavian design, also present in Charles and Ray's work. Their children's elephant chair combines a simplified elephant form with organically shaped bent plywood, creating a humanized version of the large animal for children's design, pictured on the screen. Similarly, the simplified elephant form was popularized by Swedish design firm founder Estrid Eriksson in the 1930s. Eriksson founded the Swedish design firm Sphinx 10. Eriksson's infamous design for her internationally known shop is seen throughout past and present Swedish design histories. The elephant textile is the firm's most well-known textile and happens to be the only pattern that Estrid Eriksson designed for her shop. Both Sphinx 10's timeless elephant textile and the Eames' elephant chair adorn contemporary children's spaces, combining Scandinavian influences and the Eames' love and appreciation for children and the act of playing with humanized organic versions of the elephant, seen in mid-century interiors and contemporary spaces. The stripped-down, minimalistic version of an elephant continues to be popular today, with Danish design company George Jensen receiving praise for their 1987 line of elephant-shaped objects for the everyday home, exuding Scandinavian cornerstones of design, like simplified shape and material. Another example of Charles and Ray's love for children are their children's chair, designed as a stackable object with a heart cut out for the child's fingers to use as a handhold. The sweet, small heart defined as humanizing modernism by Eames scholar Dr. Pat Kirkham is clearly reminiscent of Scandinavian architecture that I noticed on my course abroad. Although a heart, like the elephant, is a common motif used globally, The Scandinavian influence on Charles and Ray's child's chair is unmistakable when viewed side by side with Eliel Sernin's 1907 chair, designed in Finland, emulating Finnish wooden architecture. Although there are more connections to make, Scandinavian design influences were also plentiful in the other homes of the Case Study House program. It's evident that Charles and Ray were influenced by Scandinavian design and incorporated humble motifs into their pieces and lives, together humanizing their objects and spaces with graceful and honest forms that took the user into consideration. In addition to Charles and Ray, the Case Study House program in general helped introduce and popularize Scandinavian design to mid-century America. The following examples showcase Scandinavian design in the interiors of case study homes. Pictured on the screen is case study house number nine, also called the Intenza House, by Charles Eames and Aero Saarinen, situated in the Pacific Palisades, designed in 1949. As you can see on the coffee table, a vase by Finnish designer Alvar Aalto sits, designed by Alvar Aalto in 1936. The vase exhibits sinuous lines and an organic shape, key characteristics of Scandinavian forms. This is case study house number 20, also known as the Stuart Bailey House, designed by Richard Neutra in the Pacific Palisades in 1948. In this image, you see the influence of a Scandinavian designer, again, Finnish designer Alvar Aalto, through the use of the Paimio chair. Aalto designed the Paimio chair in 1931. The chair was named after a town in Finland where Aalto designed a tuberculosis sanatorium. The angle of the chair's back was designed to help patients breathe easier. The 1931 chair, utilizing bent plywood forms, is a precursor to the Eames's proliferation of furniture made out of bent plywood. 
also looking at case study house number 20 designed by Richard Neutra in 1948. On the left hand side of the screen you see another Scandinavian chair, this time by Danish furniture designer Jens Riesholm. The Riesholm lounge chair was designed in 1943. This lounge chair was the first piece of furniture manufactured by American furniture company Knoll. It was made from discarded parachute webbing due to wartime restrictions on materials. Moving on to case study house number 21, designed by Pierre Koenig in West Hollywood in 1958. We see the tulip chair, designed in 1955 by Aero Saarinen. Designed to accompany his dining table, Aero Saarinen designed the wildly popular tulip chair in 1955. This image of the tulip chairs and dining table on the cover of Better Homes and Gardens shows how Scandinavian design infiltrated outside of the case study house program and into the American middle class suburban realm. Looking at case study house number 20, the Bass Saul House in Altadena, California, designed in 1958, by the firm Straub, Buff, and Hensman. You see the tangerine colored, red, orange colored womb chair in the upper right corner of the screen, designed in 1946 by Aero Saarinen. And in the lower left corner of the screen, you see the Kennedy armchair, designed by Danish furniture designer Hans Wegner in 1949. During the first nationally televised presidential debate in 1960, Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy each sat in the Kennedy armchair, nicknamed thereafter for its namesake. On the right-hand side of the screen, you see on the exterior of the house another reiteration of the tulip armchair by Aero Saarinen. In this illustration from circa 1960, you see Hans Wegner's Kennedy armchair again. It is seen in a futuristic interior designing. It is seen in a futuristic advertisement for interior design aimed at the general American public. Aero Saarinen's womb chair, photographed in Charles and Ray's home and numerous other case study houses, permeated throughout American suburban homes and helped popularize Scandinavian furniture with its organic forms and attention to ergonomics. You also see the womb chair again on the cover of Better Homes and Gardens from October 1957, again displaying a home that is outside of the case study house program. In conclusion, the Eames's close friendship with the Saarinens, as well as their worldly travels and an interest in honest, simple, and organic craftsmanship, connect the Scandinavian design influences seen in the Eames's work. Scandinavian design and furniture were cornerstones of American modern design that were showcasing the in the, that were showcased in the interiors of the case study homes eventually appearing in publications and middle-class homes across mid-century America.